Thank you so much for being part of this week's edition of NBS's Business Perspective. We welcome you back from the Easter holiday. Let's catch up next week. Same time, same place. I am Isabella Mahmoud. <laughs>
for signs to see if they are real opposition or they are, they are scoring in the same goal as uh, the people they are purporting to be removing. Now, reporter Adam Mayambal has been following this story in FDC. He comes in here tonight. Adam, how is uh, the FDC Najana Nkumbi faction reacting to all this? Well, it's not something they have welcomed. They have actually called some of those leaders into a disciplinary committee, which I don't see happening. The people in Katonga say they have the best 11, and that only means those in Najana Nkumbi have substitutes, probably. Now, what the National Unity Platform has done is to clear the air of a matter surrounding the controversy on the party's lack of a basic law, and we're talking its constitution, through a post of their ex-handle. The National Unity Platform does admit defects in the constitution, but clarifies that despite using the one that was inherited in 2020, it has since amended that one, and it was gazetted by the Electoral Commission as recent as 2023, according to NUP, their utilization of the amended constitution is dependent on the Electoral Commission's conclusion of its remaining administrative states on the constitution. The NUP constitution comes under scrutiny following the suspension of the party's deputy president for Buganda, Matthias Mpuga. He, uh, he is accused of irregularly receiving 500 million shillings as a service award for his two and a half year term as the leader of opposition. That is coming in there from the National Unity Platform. Now still on the National Unity Platform there, there is fear that the National Unity Platform is selectively applying justice while dealing with the suspended Deputy President for Buganda, Matthias Mpuga. Now some have gone on to suggest that Mpuga could be the perfect bet they needed to explore more political opportunities. While the tweet mischievous 500 million service award money has given NUP a chance to shine as leader opposition and parliamentary commissioner. And because Ugandans are sick and tired of, of this uh, corruption habit in this country, anybody who appears to be fighting corruption becomes the darling of, 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 of the people. And so NUP is trying to say, look, we are the only one who can tackle corruption. And we are going to do this by starting with our own, not just, not just their own, but one of the most senior member to deal with. So it's also a show to the public to build and gain more confidence that they can. Uh, and um, so it's partly a political strategy because they want to drive a message across. Professor Gengalatigo says, and I quote, NUP is right to make him an example because in politics you take advantage of the weaknesses of your opponents and create opportunities for yourself. Questions, however, arise as to how far NUP is willing to go with the matter, given that calls for reconciliation seem not to be the direction that the warring parties want to take. On Easter Sunday, the party spokesperson, also leader of opposition, Joel Sanyonyi, dispelled rumors and Impuga was sacked, saying it's upon him to decide whether to leave or stay. Now, Victoria has been uh, with us and for us on this. Victoria, there's quite a bunch on uh, this Mpuga uh, Chagulanyi saga, some even uh, arguing that the selective application of justice and the moral code of the National Unity Platform. Now, the question I'm putting to you, Victoria, is, is very simple. How far is the NUP uh, capable and likely to go on with this? Well, it's a question of morality, but does a principle really apply in politics? The issue at hand seems to be beyond what is being queried, with some suggesting that maybe Mpuga is threatening the throne. Thanks, Victoria. Now, members of parliament are demanding that the government widens the budget reduction to ministries and agencies amidst debate over parliamentary funding cuts. Legislators insist that any proposed cuts to the parliamentary budget must be part of a broader initiative to trim government expenditures. In the current budget paper, it is projected that Uganda's budget in the next financial year will soon around 58 trillion shillings from the current 52.7 trillion shillings. However, Member of Parliament Mwanga Chivumbi has denounced the suggested budget cuts, asserting that they are merely a smokescreen for diverting funds towards the upcoming 2026 general elections.
In the recent national discourse, there has been a growing emphasis on budgetary reductions within government entities. This prompted the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Finance to develop proposals aimed at curtailing the extravagances witnessed within the August House by slashing the parliamentary budget to almost 50%. The proposal has stirred discontent among legislators who argue that targeting the parliamentary budget is merely blowing smoke, considering the numerous unjustified expenditures rampant within other government bodies, preceding any scrutiny of the parliament's expense. Look at the budget of State House. Not the office of the president, where ESO, ESO, and these others are run. The biggest hemorrhage is in how you manage your presidency at a cost of now three billion per day. A very poor country like Uganda, how can you have 82, almost 80 something ministers? And of, of those many ministers, very few are functional. Legislators suggest that the Ministry of Finance should first address its own fiscal practices before scrutinizing other entities for budget cuts. I have just looked at the audit report in his ministry. Seven three trillion of your borrowed money is undispersed and five of the dispersed is unutilized every year, yet you are paying interest. They took a supplementary of 1.4 trillion and only used 770 billion. The rest unused. They had expenses on fees over and above what was budgeted, 48 used 100 and something in his ministry. In the latest budget projection, Uganda's budget for the next financial year is estimated to increase to around 58 trillion from the current 52.7 trillion. However, veteran legislator Mwanga Chivumbi suggests that the recent budget increase outlined in the government papers may be a poly to amass funds for the upcoming 2026 general elections. Now, as, as Parliament fumes over their budget cuts, the debate is now shifting to areas that the government needs to reduce the cost of public administration that are having a toll on the taxpayers' money. The legislators say the cuts are done. Even wasteful expenditure should be dealt with, and consequently, the discretionary will increase. Earlier this year, the government stated its intention to reduce the cost of administration, starting with rationalization, and now the dawn is at Parliament. The 50% cut for Parliament has left many wondering where next the government ought to cut. First, for many to point out, are the presidential advisors who are almost double of the cabinet size. We have the State House. Two, we have Office of the President. Number three, we have the Parliament of Uganda. The presidential advisors are entitled for salaries, a vehicle, fuel, among other things, to perform their duties. The 139 draw a total of 644 million per month in salaries with the highest paid 20 million shillings and the lowest earning up to 2.3 million shillings. This means in every financial year the government spends at least 7.7 .7 billion if the number is maintained. This is coupled with senior presidential assistants receiving salaries of 1.2 billion shillings annually. These are more than ministers and all of them are being given a brand new Pajero car. All of them are being paid, ranging between 15 million to 20 million Uganda shillings every month. Now you ask yourself, what are the functions of these so-called presidential advisors? Others suggested cutting down on the fleet of the government, citing that it has become overly costly to sustain 60 vehicles of a presidential fleet with each driver drawing salaries. Not just this, and hard calls have for long advised the president to cut down his cabinet. Currently, 81 ministers are serving with each accorded an SUV costing at a minimum of 150 million shillings, coupled with fuel, allowances, security and treatment. A fully equipped seed school in Uganda, you need about 2.3 uh, billion shillings. So if you're going to save 900 billion from state house, from Office of the President and from Parliament, you should be able to build per year about 400 seed schools in the country. Many say the number of resident district representatives and deputies ought to be revised.
Now, while government is carrying out budget cuts across different sectors, with the legislature starting to feel the pinch, budget expert Julius Mukunda has raised concern on the government's decision to increase its budget for the financial year 2024-2025 to 58.3 trillion shillings. He says the government's decision to take budget cuts has been long overdue, arguing that if the government continues to spend more than it collects, it's headed for a debt trap if already not trapped yet. Because we know what we need in this country to revamp this economy and it can grow tenfold. Number one, do not build new roads, fix the old ones. If you do that, you are going to reduce the cost of traffic jam in this country because we lose a lot of money. Number two, enhance our education system. Right now, if you look at children who start primary school, only a third of them finish P7. So you wonder where the rest are. The literacy rates are so low. So you want to skill that population to be able to get the right jobs, but also bring returns to those particular jobs. Number three, enhance our health system one day. And next day you are back to add productivity to, to, add to, 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 to the labor market. Right now we'll find out that maize is still being exported in its raw form. We export uh, carrots, we export the beans, we export uh, carrots, we export the beans, but none of these we are adding value to them. So you want to invest in value addition. And that's why now you see, I'm not even mentioning the any other department of government that is of consumptive nature like parliament, like state house, like presidency, all these ones. I can't mention them because they are not. They will not improve economic growth by tenfold. They will not. So we need to get money from them. They are very important. They are very big people. We understand. But this is not the moment for big people and big persons. This is the moment of surviving and returning our growth back to a good trajectory. Now, let's revisit uh, the FDC Katonga story where members in the FDC Katonga faction are opting to create a new political party. They definitely have to undergo certain procedures at the Electoral Commission as, as stipulated in the law. Let's look at uh, the law itself. First, they have to make fo a formal request in writing to the Electoral Commission expressing their intention and making reservation of the name, symbol, slogan, and colors of the political party. But number two, they have to obtain from the Electoral Commission an application form. That is Form 1 of the third schedule of the Political Party Organization Act 2005. And three, they have to obtain from the Electoral Commission a declaration of assets and liabilities and particulars of the Political Party Organization. Now that's Form 2 in the third schedule of uh, the PPOA Act 2005. Number four, they have to submit Form 1 and 2 duty filled uh, by them and endorsed by a commission of oaths uh, not a republic. Number five, they have to submit two copies of the party constitution duly signed by the authorized officials of the organization together with proof of payment of the deed fee as prescribed in the regulations. But also, they have to go on and submit a list of the full names and addresses of at least 50 members of the organization from each of at least two-thirds of all the districts of each of the traditional geographical regions of Uganda and who must be resident or registered voters in the district. Number seven, they have to provide a full description of the identifying symbols, slogans, and colors of the organization or political party. And after approval, they have to pay the prescribed registration fee. We don't know whether now they'll choose blue yet again. Well, that awaits, uh, we await to see that. Number eight, uh, on receipt of the application, the commission will embark on the registration process and may cause independent inquiries to be made to ascertain the truth or correctness of particulars submitted with the application and the electoral commission shall process the application within six months. And lastly, the electoral commission shall not register at least that is quite clear. Any political party or organization whose name, slogan, or color resembles that of a political party that has already been registered or whose aims and objectives or constitution contravenes any law. Well, we don't know what happened with the case of the National Union Platform and UPC, but that's a case of another day. Let's now get into your feedback. Feedback brought to you by Write Your Story with us. Your story matters.
Here is your feedback on our opinion question tonight. We ask you to comment on uh, what your view is on plans by the FDC Katoma faction to form a new political party. Hashtag NBS Live at 9, both on Facebook and X. Our first comment coming in from Timothy Olinga says, A breakup isn't a solution. They are stronger together than divided. These are trivial matters that should be discussed by both parties and forge a better solution as one. Godfrey Odeke says they can form it, and after some years, they can disagree again. They split and form other political parties, and the cycle continues. Leaders should be able to coexist amidst their differences. If themselves can't do that, how then shall they be able to unite Ugandans? They have selfish interests. Still on X, Bernard Mwanguzi says notable characters in the faction have considered political parties as just vehicles in which they move towards their ambition. I, however, think these parties should show the enemy where and how to strike. We've also seen every political party here struggling with an invisible attack. On Facebook, that's uh, Kahwa Dani. They just will waste more of taxpayers' money. Changing the government doesn't need creating of more political parties, but uh, constants, charisma, courage, and will. They are just trying to find more loopholes of eating taxpayers' money. Social Sport Mart, brought to you by Mexcom. These are what your leaders online are saying in our social spotlight tonight. Dr. Sarah Vereta says, Ugandans should borrow a leaf from Kenya's dynamic political landscape. Political parties uh, slash coalitions that compete for power are usually formed two years or less to elections. UDA, which led the Kenya Kwanza coalition, and Azimio Laomoja, one Kenya, were formed towards the 2022 elections that's in Kenya. Bobby Wine has says that uh, NUP president, in our ever-evolving world, the era of rigid generals and stereotypes has passed. Men and women working hand in hand, recognizing each other's unique strengths and contributions, create a stronger, more inclusive society. Let's embrace this cool vibe of everyone sharing responsibilities and leading together. What a man can do, a woman can do. And now the new Minister for Children and Youth Affairs, uh, that's uh, Balam Bargara Tenyi, says spent Easter in Utebo district mobilizing residents to embrace government development programs, denounce corruption and discourage defilement practices, and deactivate forced early marriages in Utebo, being one of the most affected districts in Uganda. NBS Live at 9 takes a break. When we return, we have more stories for you. to keep our home sparkling clean. That's why we use Bim All-Purpose Cleaner every day. You see, these other products just don't clean our toilets and sinks very well. Only real original Vim can clean and leave no germs or dirt behind. So when I go to the Kaduka or supermarket, I always choose Bim Lemon Fresh or Lavender Fresh. Vim All-Purpose Cleaner. Maximum cleaning with minimum effort. Kills 99.9% .9 of household germs. The government of Uganda, in collaboration with the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, welcomes you to the Global Symposium for Regulators, GSR J4, taking place at the Speak Resort and Convention Center Munyonyo in Kampala from July 1st to 4th, 2024. The Global Symposium for Regulators is an annual event organized by the International Telecommunication Union, ITU. The GSR brings together 700 international delegates, including the world's telecommunication and information communication technology regulators, policymakers, and industry stakeholders. Let's work together to promote regulation for impact. Welcome to GSR 24 Kampala. Introducing Jama White Bar Washing Soap, your laundry's best companion. With superior quality in both white and cream tights, Jama is the secret to impeccable cleanliness. 
It's gentle on your fabrics, lathers easily, and tough on stains, ensuring a long-lasting freshness that your quilts deserve. Jamal Washing Bar Soap, the trusted choice for your laundry. Available in all shops and supermarkets nationwide. Distributed by Chopper General Enterprises. Located at shop number 3, Pacific Building, Chikuwa, Kampala. You can contact them on plus 256-200-915-693. At NCBA, we can tailor-make your SME business solution to suit your business. It's what we have done for over 50,000 businesses so far. 50,000? Mommy, that is 50,000 families with 50,000 milk every day and 50,000 dreams coming to life. We know that it's not about the business, but about caring for loved ones. Get NCBA SME Banking Solutions. The name is NCBA. And the numbers that matter to you matter to us. NCBA Bank. Go for it. Welcome back. Now, it is leaders in Lango sub-region that have called for the withdrawal of the UPDF Fisheries Protection Unit currently enforcing fishing regulations on Lake Choga. They say there that the continuous presence of the UPD officials protection unit on Lake Choga and Lake Kwania is barring locals from fishing, accusing the force of being involved in cases of torture that have claimed several lives on the lake. In the wee hours of March 3rd, 2024, Dennis Opio, like his fellow fishermen, left home with his friends to enter Lake Choga, where they usually go for fishing. Despite being informed of the presence of patrol around the lake, Opio had hopes of catching fish from the lake. His mother, Sarah Anyango, said they were hours later informed that their son had been arrested and beaten by the UPDF soldiers. Two days later, Opio's body was found trapped at the lake shores. Opio and his two brothers are counted among the list of 45 victims of UPDF brutality on the lake. Opio do te bi nu ara do bi gin kuta bi chan ko le kite do yere me ba yere do bo do bur nam ni rario. Local leaders in the region say the presence of soldiers is buying local communities living along the shores of the lake from carrying out fishing activities which is the main source of income for the households. We were spot on by killing of Omara Patrick from Adonimo. We were spot on by the killing of the son of Odwe at Namasale, where a mob came in. And these are allegations that are known publicly by the community. The leaders also accused the Fisheries Protection Unit of impounding fishing gears and reselling to the communities and being involved in cases of death. The conditions which have been made for those to access fish have removed a large section of the community. It is now put in a certain category of people, some of whom may not even be part of the fishing community to make money. Can we get answers? Can we get sustainable alternatives to enforcing legal fishing other than killing? Currently, the local leaders have submitted a list of 45 victims of crimes including rape, murder, torture, allegedly committed by the UPDF. Now, the LC5 uh, chairperson of Amolata is saying, and uh, the name we have here is uh, Geoffrey Ocheng, is saying that despite efforts by local leaders to ensure a peaceful coexistence of the fisheries protection unit and the locals, there's been no interventions that would allow communities to engage in productive activities. Let's listen in. In retaliation, the mob killed the UPDF informer. So the police arrested the father of the late that... He was part of the plan. Why didn't he chase the people who gathered from his home and left for five kilometers to look for UPDF informant? So this was very unfortunate. The man is in custody and yet he's innocent. He was not part of anything. The UPDF FPU together with the security, they want to shield the crimes committed by FPU against the family by putting this man behind bars. It is very unfortunate that a poor person at the level of S31 who has labored to pay his children from senior one to senior six could lose all the three children within a span of less than one year. It is like a state of war 
where the FPU has declared war against the people of Amalata. It only took the intervention of the resident district commission just today. They followed civilians up to their houses and started firing bullets. They do not want to see you with any fish in your house. Whether it's a, a, a right size of fish, those fish belong to them. Now these are numbers that matter and if you're a taxpayer, like many of you are, you should be interested in these figures. Let's look at taxpayers paying less than 15 million shillings. In 2019-2020, that financial year, they stood at about 82,826, uh, while they grew in 2020-2021, surprisingly during COVID, uh, from 82,000 to 98,255. And uh, after COVID in 2022-2023, that's uh, the last financial year, did, they did grow from 98,000 to 118,715. Those are taxpayers that are paying less than 15 million shillings. However, taxpayers that are paying above 50 uh, billion but don't exceed 100 billion. Uh, we are talking in 2019-2020, they stood at 162 only. In 2020-2021, surprisingly around COVID, they grew uh, to 173 and they did also grow to 198 between 2021 and 2022. But the last financial year, they did fall to 104, which is the lowest in those four years that have been put there in comparison. Let's take a look at taxpayers who pay above 100 billion shillings. In 2019-2020, it stood at 146, but in 2022-2023, they did fall from 146 to almost half. That's about 74. Interesting figures right there. Now, Kampala Metropolitan Police reveals that reports from all security ju jurisdictions indicate that the Easter festivities were generally peaceful. Kampala Metropolitan Deputy Police Spokesperson Luke Oesejire says except petty crimes in Nansen and Kawempe, the celebrations were largely peaceful. Having registered any serious crimes within the Easter season, uh, apart uh, from uh, a few fires uh, which we believe did not uh, claim in a person. We had uh, operations after some reports from members of the public within areas of Nansana uh, and Kawempe uh, and also here in, in the areas where some people had uh, uh, concerts of uh, thefts of phones and uh, we conducted these operations. Altogether we made arrests of uh, about uh, 40 suspects within those areas, and in Nansana, we made the rest of about 14 uh, persons. So that is what exactly happened, but we didn't register any major crime. In the fires we registered, no life was lost, and uh, they were all extinguished as soon as possible. So investigations are still ongoing in the suspect we are holding in custody. Now, the Uganda Police Force is investigating a very interesting story in which uh, meat resembling a young boy's uh, genitals uh, was found in a food served at a local eatery. Kampala Metropolitan Police says that uh, two have been arrested, including the business owner and a waitress, to help in investigations. <laughs> In a bizarre incident, a customer at a local eatery lodged a complaint about an object he found in food bought from an eatery on Buganda Road in Kampala that looked suspiciously like a child's male organ. Confirming the incident, Deputy Police Spokesperson Luko Esigere said police have taken the oddly shaped piece of meat for examination. We took the whole plate of food, food as evidence and uh, we have subjected it, we have submitted it to the pathologist experts to inform us on what this could be. Namgera Mariam, the eatery owner, and Nakaoje Josephine, the waitress, have been arrested to aid the police in investigations. However, neighbors to the business refuted the allegations, saying it might be a plot to sabotage their colleagues' business. No muchara ba musibye ko statement ye tali mpuf. Mpala naza abano. Mpala naza amirimu. Tuli mkwe uunyalu ansonganti. Kampala Capital City Authorities Manager Health Inspection, Education and Sanitation, Kaola Henry, says food-related businesses undergo a rigorous certification process including multiple inspections of premises and personnel. As health inspection, we do medical examination. So we are required by law to examine all the food handlers within the city 
and then those ones that meet the minimum medical fitness uh, standards are, are now certified. So we are required to do this every six months. However, Kaula advises city dwellers to be careful where they get their meals, saying some Kampala eateries continue to operate illegally without licenses. More to come. Brought to you by Castro. It's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. Now there's a residence of a prime minister that is under attack. Who that is and where that happened, we'll let you know. We'll also let you know who is on the rolls and why when we come back. Be empathetic, be kind, share the feelings of others, be kind to them, and Allah will be kind to you. Allah says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتِرَى It is a mercy of being. A kind to them all Prophet. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّنْ غَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ And if you were hard, Hard-hearted, they would run away from you. Being kind as a boss, as an employer, as a teacher, as a parent, is more successful than being harsh to others and hard-hearted. Wherever you are hard-hearted and harsh, the most talented people who are working with you will leave you. Be kind. Be humble. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ Kindness is from Allah. It's because of the mercy from Allah. We are kind to each other. Ramadan is a month of mercy. Being kind to the poor, to the needy, to people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be kind to us. Travel, your life changing journey. Attention everyone, the Ministry of Health has planned to vaccinate all persons aged one year to 60 years old to protect them against yellow fever disease. The mass vaccination will take place in 53 districts in these regions Kampala, Buganda, Teso, Ankole, and Karamoja. Vaccination is free and available at all government health facilities and outreach posts in these regions. The vaccination campaign will take place from April 2nd to April 8th, 2024. The vaccine is safe, effective and free of charge and has been approved by World Health Organization and Ministry of Health. This message is from Ministry of Health with support from Gavi. Stories of dreamers, stories of creators, stories of strivers, stories of believers, and we're inspired by them all. That's why we invite you to write your story with us. Your story matters. Welcome to the Primary Listers, your gateway to titled property in Uganda. Come and explore our services, including real estate financing, land documentation, property sales, and more. Easily buy and sell land and houses on major roads connecting to Kampala with unique payment options that include paying directly or through our financial partners. Enjoy landlord benefits while paying in installments of up to three years through a 30% higher purchase arrangement. Visit us at Ham Towers, Makere, First Floor. Real people invest in real value. That's real estate. My brother might be blind. 
but for him, football is not just about what we see. For what we feel. In December, you would shop without a shopping list. <laughs> you would even ask for a driver for your shopping cart. Hey, honestly, you want me to pay? And again, I carry. Ah, get someone to carry these things. <laughs> but now New Year is here. You're even carrying the wings girl to the shop. <laughs> but, uh, Jiruba. New Year. A Komi Umu party too with all its problems. But don't worry because all is sorted with Stanbic Bank. Simply pay using your Stanbic Visa card or FlexiPay and stand to win up to a 10% cashback. For more information, contact us on 0800-150-150 or visit our social media platforms. Top Stories, brought to you by... Stay ahead in your business with Bank of Africa's contract financing solutions available at every stage of your contract. Bank of Africa, as strong as a group, as close as a party. And these are our top stories tonight. Legislators won the proposal to cut the budget to stretch to other government agencies. Questions emerge over the FDC Katonga countrywide consultation with some suggesting that Best J could be making a comeback. And also the National Unity Platform has defended the constitution despite defects, saying they are yet to use the 2023 amended constitution that was gazetted by the Electoral Commission. Now, tonight, turmoil strikes uh, in Libya as the residence of uh, the Prime Minister comes under attack. President Erdogan on the ropes as Turkey's main opposition claims significant victories in key cities. Plus, a court in Pakistan suspends former Prime Minister Imran Khan's jail sentence. We have those stories and more in today's Foreign Wrap. So the Libyan Prime Minister targeted with rocket-propelled grenades in an attack that left no casualties. A Libyan minister says political parties in Mali request for a time frame for presidential elections after the ruling junta failed to organize polls within a promised 24-month transition back to democracy. Turkey's main opposition party claims big election victories in the main cities of Istanbul and Ankara, dealing a major blow to President Tayyip Erdogan, currently serving his third term as president. Russian emergency services called off an operation to rescue 13 men trapped in a gold mine in the far east of the country, declaring them dead. A court in Pakistan suspends a 14-year jail sentence against former Prime Minister Imran Khan over illegal selling of state gifts. Now, NBS Pulse is coming up, but first... Isabella Tugume, food rights activists have warned of a looming increment or, at worst, a scarcity of maize flour and other maize-related items on the Ugandan market, following a sharp drop in the farm gate prices of that of maize that has demoralized farmers owing to huge losses that they have suffered in the past two weeks. The kilogram of maize grain now costs between 400 to 500 shillings. A kilogram of maize grain now costs between 400 shillings and 500 shillings from the 800 shillings the previous harvesting season. And some farmers are losing hope, thinking of other cash crops. Judith Nabimanya works with Seattle, Uganda, and has been in the field listening to the farmer stories, and they are nothing short of pain and despair, as affording basic necessities like sugar and soap could be hard. If, if, a, if a bar of soap, for example, is 6,000 or 6,500, 6, that means that farmer needs to part away with around uh, six, 12 kilograms of, uh, of maize to buy just one bar. Of soap. David Kabanda says much as the price at the farm gate are at their lowest, the price at the milling centers are picking. We have had a jump from between 500 to 600 now to 1,200. And what does it mean? It means that we are heading to a catastrophic situation where many people will surely go hungry. Kabanda insists that government should do something. Can we have food reserves? 
can we have a national food reserve system? It may not be buildings. It may be just a system or a structure that helps people to get food when it is scarce. But at an individual level, experts recommend agroeconomic practices and proactiveness of farmers. We need now to ask people to diversify. Don't depend on maize because you all have now known that it is very difficult. It is not stable. While prices of maize have been a growing concern with access to markets persisting, there is fear that farmers... The World Bank says East Asia's growth is faster than most parts of the world, but China headwinds weigh in with growth in developing East Africa, East Asia and Pacific outpacing the rest of the world. However, the region will likely see slower growth in 2024 amid headwinds in China and broader policy uncertainty. Despite remaining the fastest growing region, the World Bank's latest report says East Asia and Pacific's growth is projected to ease 4.5% in 2024 from 5.1% last year amid headwinds in China and policy uncertainty. However, excluding China, growth in the EAP region is predicted to reach 4.6% this year, higher than 4.4% in 2023. China has become profoundly important for the region as a source of inputs, as a destination where value-added produce in the region is ultimately consumed and as well as a source of investment. It's a region that is still outperforming the rest of the world, but it's underachieving relative to its own potential. Now, despite the fact that we've been in the Easter holidays, many people are crying foul, especially traders, for the fact that there was a low turnup from people who would have presumed to shop more during this period. Our markets of scope are Nakasero, Kaleri, and Nakawa, and today we look at maize, flour, sugar, and rice. Now, a kilogram of sugar goes for 6,000 shillings. That is standard across two markets, but is 1,000 shillings cheaper in Nakawa market. Maize flour that is facing a crisis on the Ugandan scale is going at 3,000 shillings a kilogram in Nakasero market, but is 1,000 shillings cheaper in Nakawa, 2,000 shillings, and 2,500 shillings cheaper in Kaleri market. Rice is going at 6,000 shillings a kilogram in Nakasero market. However, in Nakawa market is 1,500 shillings cheaper at 4,500, and in Kaleri market it goes for the cost of 5,500. Cooking oil, soap, and matoke. Matoke being one of the most consumed items given that we are in the holy month of Ramadan, but also the fact that Christians are out of their fasting period. A bunch goes for 50,000 shillings in Nakasero market, but is 15,000 shillings cheaper in Owino market at 35,000 shillings and 5,000 shillings cheaper in Akawa market at 45,000 shillings. Uh, cooking oil is 8,000 shillings uh, each a liter at Nakasero market, but is much cheaper in Nakawa and Owino market, cheaper by 1,500 shillings. And then soap, a bar goes for 7,000 shillings in Nakasero market, 6,500 in Nakawa market, but is cheaper by 1,000 shillings in Owino market. Let's have a look at what's trending in the world of sport. Sports News brought to you by Black Shines Bright. Drink it in. Following a relatively successful outing at the just concluded African Games in Ghana, stakeholders are calling upon the government to invest more in preparation of athletes for better results. Uganda scooped a total of 20 medals from the 13th edition of the Pan African Multi Sport Event. The recently concluded 13th edition of the African Games in Accra, Ghana, saw so Uganda scoop for gold medals, six silver and ten bronze medals, having fielded the biggest number of athletes ever. Uganda Olympic Committee Chairman Dr. Donald Rukare believes that Uganda did well at the Games, although more is needed in terms of preparing athletes. So for example, Kajimo, who has been riding in uh, both here in Africa but also ab abroad, did very well in Africa. The basketball teams, the badminton team, the swimmer we have, came from the U.S. So it's very clear that you have to have a combination of good coaches, good preparation, and events that are both local, regional, and international. He wants to see sustained support from the government. We'd like to see this sustained support before the Games, maybe like two years before, three to two years before, and then building into things like the Commonwealth Games, the Olympic Games. Uganda Boxing Federation patron Captain Mike Mokula is happy that despite ill preparations, boxing brought Uganda three bronze medals. It is a major achievement for the country. And as you know, boxing has won more accolades, more medals than any other sport in the country from the time we got independent. 
I want therefore to say that this is an appeal to government of Uganda through my young brother Peter Gwang and the First Lady Mama Janet Museveni and His Excellency the President to support boxing. He wants to see more exposure to the athletes. There are many young people who are talented and if Uganda exposes them to support and to international matches, I want to assure you that there are no better ambassadors uh, for the country than the sporting fraternity. According to Rukare, the focus should now shift to the 2024 Paris Olympic qualification. Currently, we have about 18 athletes who have qualified, 16 from athletics, one from rowing, Kathleen Noble, one from cycling, Charles Kajimu, who hopes swimming will qualify. So we are working together with the National Council and the Ministry to keep on providing support to the federations so that they can, we still have a qualification window up to June. Uganda competed in a total of 17 disciplines at the two-week-long games, with medals coming from cycling, badminton, rugby, boxing, athletics, cricket, swimming, football and weightlifting. Sports News brought to you by Black Shines Bright. Drink it in. The government of Uganda, in collaboration with the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, welcomes you to the Global Symposium for Regulators, GSR 24, taking place at the Speak Resort and Convention Center Munyonyo in Kampala from July 1st to 4th, 2024. The Global Symposium for Regulators is an annual event organized by the International Telecommunication Union, ITU. The GSR brings together 700 international delegates, including the world's telecommunication and information communication technology regulators, policymakers, and industry stakeholders. Let's work together to promote regulation for impact. Welcome to GSR 24 Kampala. Okay, what about the 5K? Okay. Mm -hmm. When you need a loan, you've got MTM Momo. Where's Toti Gay? Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. Sparkle Salon knows that good grooming is not an option in the modern world. It's a basic need, a need which we have for over two decades mastered provision of by building a great team of professionals and never compromising on the quality of our product. Ambiences and convenience for our clients at all of our branches at Oasis Mall, Garden City, Lugogo Mall, Forest Mall, and Akasha Mall. Sparkle Salon, inspired by your needs. Are you ready for an Easter weekend like no other? Picture this, four blissful days nestled in the serene beauty of Lake Victoria Serena Golf Resort and Spa. Wake up to the gentle lapping of the lake, indulge in exquisite dining experiences and tee off at our world-class golf course. But wait, there is more. Rejuvenate at our Maisha Spa Renewal Retreat for a pampering session or soak up the sun by our standing poolside with activities for every taste. From thrilling water sports to relaxing nature walks, there is never a dull moment at Lake Victoria Serena. So why settle for an ordinary Easter weekend when you can make it extraordinary? Book your getaway now and create memories that will last a lifetime. Lake Victoria Serena Golf Resort and Spa, where every moment is magical.
Get ready to elevate your events with Fenno Events to corporate gatherings. Our top tier products are designed to make your events stand out. At Fenno Events, we prioritize your satisfaction. Our team ensures every detail is handled with care, offering safe, reliable, and stylish event services. Ready to serve? Dial us at plus two five six seven zero seven four two four 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 zero or plus two five six three nine three two five six nine one eight or email at penoevents at yahoo.com or visit www.penoevents.com. Find us along Komamboga Road after Prime Fuel Station, Chanja Chisasi. Peno Events, we create unforgettable memories. Your satisfaction is our priority. Book with us today for a touch of professionalism and style. Peno Events, safe, reliable, stylish. Well, coming up tomorrow on the Morning Breeze and, uh, of course, the politics will be discussing opposition's internal strife and uh, hosting Mwambusia Nderesa, who is a political historian. Together with... Uh, he will be joined by Edgar Tavaro, political analyst and a Lord Don. Catch that conversation bright and early tomorrow at 8 a.m. And also coming up here is, uh, of course, uh, BBC documentary Trapped in Oman. And, guys, I just want to say it's been a pleasure working with you. Why? Where are you going? one of the most profitable business in the world. Any African so never go to this country. Never. Not a man. Never. Shut up. I tell the doctor. What you think? What are you doing? You, you crazy. I was angry. I was crying. This is more than slavery. That's what I think. We want our people back. How can you buy somebody else's freedom? This is a story of humanity in the face of inhumanity. It's a story of helplessness and of those who are helping, and of poverty in the face of wealth and power. My name is Florence Pili, and I'm a journalist. My country, Malawi, is one of the poorest in the world. So many women from here hoped to improve their lives in the Middle East only to find they are trapped. This is their story, and the story of extraordinary women fighting to bring them home. But this is a universal tale, and it doesn't begin or end in one country alone. Get in here, get in here, get in here. Who do we have here? Uh, motion live from Nigeria, Lagos, Kavena Tachedwa. No, 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 my brother, you are just right in time. Uh, Otis, long time, how are you doing? Somebody here is asking, like, what will you tell us about Oman? I will not advise you to go to Oman. I will not want even my enemies to go through that. I am a Malawian. Even though I live here in America, I was born a Malawian and that will never change. They treat me as if I'm a dog, not a human being, because these people, they are very bad. Over the past two years, 
I become a social media activist and have almost 25,000 followers. Over a year ago, I saw this post end. This was a young woman, uh, her name was Georgina, who was explaining that I am in Oman. I came here only to realize that I am trapped. Are you alone in Oman? She told me no. There are many girls. They also want help because they are trapped in Oman. I am lonely in my room. I am in my room. I don't know what to do. They have only and they have come and look me and they threaten to stab me to death. If I die, no one will know because they will dump my body. Mom, please, I want to go home. I'm tired. The very first day I arrived, my passport was taken away from me. They know whatever they can do to us, we can never escape. I work from Sunday to Sunday. I don't have a door off. You're not allowed to talk to anyone, no matter what. Georgina is the first victim. Then it was one girl, two girls, three girls, up to almost 50 Malawian young women that contacted me that I am also here and I need help. That's when I said, okay, so you know what, guys, what we're going to do? I'm going to form a group because this looks like human trafficking. As Pidilani began to fight online for the women's freedom, Georgina managed to escape home with the help of someone in Oman. For many months, I've been trying to contact women to help tell this story, both those who are still trapped in Oman and those who have returned to tell the tale. We are on our way to meet Georgina. No one in my country had heard of the plight of women in Oman until she raised an alarm online. She had a good business in the city, but was led to believe a better opportunity lay abroad that would help her support her family. I have been in touch with her many times. I know she's severely damaged and traumatized. I don't know what to expect, but I really want to hear her full story. I 